It's a good prank. <laughs> we recorded a whole intro, but it wasn't recording. So let's do this again. Take number 4,642. Hi, everybody. I'm Danielle. This is Peas in a Podcast. I'm Danielle from Peas Love and Carrots. I'm getting so confused now. I am your host, and I'm here with my co-host, although she thinks she's the host. Dum, dum, dum. I don't think I'm the host. This is Mimic Light Mom. You want the podcast. You want well, it to yourself? No, no, but everyone keeps sending me texts telling me that they want oh, me to your... be the co-host. I, and I love my son-in-law, Ellie, but they prefer me as a co-host. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? No, I thought, I, want you were, your... I thought you were getting ready to kick me off the podcast. No, has to call you. No, oh, no, I'm still no. allowed to be here. I can't work without you. The, the, oh, it's really? We're a team. Oh, look at it's that. teamwork. Look at that. You bring out the best in me. Do I? Yes, do I? you do. do I? Okay, well, this is a very spontaneous episode. By the way, this is season This is season two, episode Yay! five. Wow. Five episodes so far. We've, wow. This is our fifth episode. And you made season. it. Do you, know who, do you remember who are all our guests were? You probably don't. Yes. That's Ali Shava. She's nursing. I'm switching sides, so she's very But, feisty. Our first one was Shabby. You, It's a learning life. That right. Was a very that good was one. very good. Abby Wallen. Very Remember, good. that was the business one. Yes. Then we had Hani Nyman, the delegating one. Love that. You I learned notes. a lot. Yeah. Yes, they're right on my desk. And then home. our last one was with Frummy. I love her. Oh my gosh, that was great. She's just the cutest I, cutie I just, pie. It, no, but also it's so real and raw. Yes. Like the yes. conversation was good. And yes. now this one has no guest. It's just me and you. But people sent in questions. But I feel like people don't know. Yeah, but they don't right. know that they don't need to send in questions. Like, they don't know oh. that you don't need to be prompted to talk. Well, that's true, too. Like, yeah. maybe dad, dad's here. I mean, he's not part of the podcast. But dad, maybe you should tell them about the time you had to drive home from Canada. Or Which, to wow. Canada. Or to, well, that's what I meant. That was the story I was right. referring okay. to. Dad, Right? Like, does mom really need to be prompted with questions to talk? Well, the first time we drove to Montreal... Eight hours. Eight hours. I think I remember saying, I think we need gas. <laughs> <laughs> And besides that, I don't think I got in too many words. But also... But like, I but, didn't have to. But that's my job. <laughs> in my marriage... That Mark, is it my job? That is your job. That's my job. That I need to keep him... Entertained, talking and talking. Sometimes I do run out of things to say. I know it's hard to believe, but I really do sometimes. Well, show mode has intermissions. It's and time. then, you need to but, then, but then, you know what? I say, okay, Mark, start something. I'll keep going, but I need a subject, fuel. something. You need information. I need fuel. Yes. Like, yes. Okay, so let's play a game. Okay. Blue. Blue? The Israeli flag. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Ends of conversation. The Israeli flag. What more could you want? Blue boys. Blue. Uh, blue. The Israeli flag. That's it. Ends of conversation. What do you want me to say yeah, about blue? You literally. Well, uh, splatter. No. Oh, well, it was yeah, a bomb. Yeah, it was a bomb. I, you know. Blue. Fine. Carotene. Carotene. Yeah. Is only good once in a while. You can't do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it kills the hair. But if you do it once a year, like right before the summer, then it's okay because, you know, it's easy in the summer. You want to put your hair up. You don't want to, you know, you go in the water out. So you want your hair to look a little better. You know. <laughs> hair color? Okay, let's go to hair color. You want to go to hair color? I'll tell you. I'm now 62 years old and my hair grows very fast. It's picking up speed. So... What? <laughs> she's laughing at me. I don't understand. I want to stop. I'm just I'm laughing at how well this went. So <laughs> can't make this up. So um, now I have to I have to color my hair every like two and a half weeks, three weeks. I'm not doing that. So, <laughs> but I discovered I, I'm you not have doing gray it. hair. I have so much gray hair. So maybe it's time for a shake though. 
So anyway, <laughs> so what I do now is I buy all the different sprays. They have like a lot of different ones. But Tamar from... Tamara Bixer. Tamara Bixer, who I love. She has the best one, which I still cannot find anywhere. Tamar. What do you mean she buys all of it? So you have to buy it from her. I from asked her. No, she told me she gets it at CVS. I went to every CVS. I cannot find CVS it. CVS is the worst pharmacy in the history of pharmacies. They only have products that you don't need. So when you don't but, need it, you see it on the shelf. Right. But then when you need it, it's gone. Right. Like Herbal Essence. Herbal Essence is elusive. You cannot find Herbal Essence gel. Unbelievable. I know. I know. So now I, you know, I buy all different sprays that they have for root color, you know, temporary. And that's what I do for a couple of weeks because I'm not going to go and get my hair colored every two and a half weeks. Why? One... It costs too much money. And two, it's a lot of wasted time sitting in a chair. Say it takes an hour. I don't know. Maybe I, you should record a podcast. Oh my gosh. You, we could you could call it like um like boring not, time? Boring <laughs> for no like boring for the armchair. Like um what's the chair called that you get a haircut in? Haircut chair? Barber's chair. Barber's, barber's chair. chair from the barber's chair. No, I don't want to. Okay, fine. That means I'd have to be there. I don't know. No, okay, no. fine. Anyway, no. the point is, is that Mimic can talk and talk, and we don't need a guest ever because you can just go on forever. But right. also what's unique about Mimic is that some people need validation when they speak, right? Like when you talk to a child. and I, need, like, I just need validation right, of they, life. No, but they need to see like <laughs> eye contact, like look at me. You need to say, mm-hmm, okay, oh my gosh, really? You need none of that. No, because, You will just keep going and going. Well, when I was in sales, when I was in the yeah. garment center, so we used to have to make appointments with new customers and the regular customers we had when it was like showtime. And, you know, we'd have a new collection. And no one ever was able to beat me in the amount of appointments I made. I am the best on the phone. So yeah. oh, podcast Well, you is, also like to talk on the phone. You not anymore. Like, you not like, anymore. Oh, I used to. Oh, please. No, oh, no. Please. Nobody, I everybody not. here is rolling their eyes. It's that not is not true. true. That is not true at all. I only not like to only, speak to not you. Not only you do you like to talk to on the phone, but you don't like to hang up the phone. Saying I, goodbye is a real only, issue. Only my children. Okay. My well, grandchildren. Only, I mean, I, I, I am your child and I speak I don't leave phone, my, so. uh, Ellie, I don't leave alone when he's in the house on business. I just keep talking. Okay. And, but. I, I, I'm not on the phone. I, I don't sit on the phone like I used to years back. I Everybody don't. here is smirking. You can't see it, but we're all smirking. Am I, Mom, do you see me on the phone? We fight at night. Who answers the phone? I don't want to answer the phone anymore. Okay. Am I right? You don't answer the phone, but, once, but when you do answer it. Well, <laughs> that's why I don't want to answer it. I don't want to be on the phone for so long. But anyway, that was my phone training. Is that that was your phone training? My phone training. Maybe you should order courses. <laughs> By the way, people need that social, yes. like social life. How to have a conversation? Yeah. How to carry a conversation with people? In the, Do you know yeah, that the there's phone? many people in the world that need a, no in life. Um, you should teach conversational skills. Like, right, have you ever met a person where I say to them, like, hi, how are you? And their response is, I'm good. Um, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm good also. Thanks for right. asking. But, like, they don't know to say, I'm good, how are you? Because nobody taught them conversations. Guys. I know who's better than me. Who? Naomi Mayer, my best friend. Oh, my God. You can't drop names here, Mom. This is a safe zone. I mean, we love you, Naomi, though. But Naomi's also very good at conversation. She's the best. But you're, you're I She's don't know. She's the best. I always marveled. We, Mom and I could walk into a room where we know nobody. And for me, if I have nothing to say, I say nothing. <laughs> and we'd go into a room full of strangers. And within five minutes, mom's got eight conversations going on with eight different people. It's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, kind of it's like what skill. happened no, last it's, night. It's really a it's skill. It's a skill. It's a talent. Kind of what I happened o- last it's night. It's a skill of conversation. I'm always amazed at mom's ability to engage so strangers. So let's say, if you were teaching a course and yes. you could give people three or four, whatever, I don't care how many, number one tips of how to engage people and how to have a conversation in a friendly manner. Smile. Okay. Smile. That would be your first step. Smile. And then when you approach someone, what's like, how do you approach somebody? Uh, 
Hi, did I meet you? See, it's so natural to you. You don't even have to think about yes. it. Yes. <laughs> Hi, did I meet you? Oh, my God. I really love that scarf you're wearing. Where did you get it? I know my daughter would love it. So, like, it's not just enough to say I love your scarf. If you have to engage in conversation. But always truth. Okay. Always truthful. Right. Okay. You know. Oh, meaning if you hate their scarf, don't say I love I don't say talk about the scarf. I'll, what if you, you know. don't like anything they're wearing? I probably don't go over and say hello. <laughs> <laughs> Mom will choose someone else and move oh on. Oh, my gosh. I, I will move sometimes on. sometimes wonder where I come from. Right. <laughs> no, I, you know, if I don't have anything to say no, to someone right. or feel so the I, I'm not going to get the... What you're saying will be maybe taken badly by the wrong people, but the truth is what you're saying makes sense because to have a conversation with somebody, you need to find common ground. But if you don't know somebody, the only way to find common ground is to look at them externally. Like, because you don't know their insides. Mom also has another ability that is just tremendous. She can walk up to somebody or encounter somebody who is unpleasant, um, not communicative, and just a nasty look on their face and within two minutes have them smiling it's and true. chatting. It's true. It's true. She can bring out the happiness in people. It's it's incredible. Because she, cause it's almost like a challenge for her. It is a challenge. <laughs> it is like, you know what? I remember when I first went into sales in the Garmin Center. Oh my gosh. We're going to title this podcast, The Art of Conversation. Best ah! Part. It's really good. You okay. really so, should, by the way, you should go to high school. You're interrupting me nonstop. <laughs> okay? So... I, you know, I got, oh. I had a bunch of accounts. Should I go but, take a nap? No, no, because you, you feed me. I feed yeah, you. I, yeah. I, you. I need to be here so you can look at me while you talk. Right, I just, I'm just right. not allowed to speak. Right, Okay. Right, right. No, you can speak, <laughs> well, but not into it. So, <laughs> Give me a signal. So I really wanted to sell Elizabeth Arden. Elizabeth Arden used to have clothing within their store. I don't know if they still do. And they had this one bio. She was a very old, charming little lady. And every season, for years, I would call her and say, I really think there are some things you can wear in you can sell in the store. And she say, I'm sorry, we it's not our style, it's not for us, we don't do contemporary, we're very traditional and very fancy. I every season every season, which is four times a year, I called her. Mary something her name was. And my boss would laugh and laugh and say, Nicole, forget it. It's not for them. She's not gonna come and leave her alone. I said, what do you care? I call. If I get the appointment, I get the appointment. If I don't, I don't. But I don't give up. Sure enough, after about two years, she came. She made an appointment. And I go to my boss. I go, Peter, I have the appointment with Elizabeth Arden. He said, no, you don't. I said, yeah, you be here. This is the time and day. And she walked in. And then Peter, the owner of the company, comes and, and says hello to her because he knew her from many, many, many years back. And he said, you know, started talking and she said, right, we got to move the story. Along. And and she said, I'm here only because of Nicole. She doesn't give up. Nice. And she placed an order. Did she? When, yeah, what was, it didn't how did sell, the story but, start? How do we get onto the story? Oh, that I don't give up on people. Oh. <laughs> oh, that you just keep chipping away. I chip away. You chip away until this file comes out. Did she place the order? She, she, she did. did. And Peter, Mom. Peter, my boss was freaked out. I could not believe it. We could be sitting in a restaurant and yeah. the server is just overwhelmed and busy and just in a nasty mood. And Mom will stop them cold before she gives them her order, which is usually a little complicated anyway. And oh my gosh, that's a whole other that's podcast. A whole other, <laughs> and mom would say, I can't give you my order unless you show me, unless you smile. And okay. normally you'd think, oh my God, somebody's going to be offended by that. But it's her tone. It's, it's her tone. Right. It's her being genuine. And the next thing you know, they seem to be in a better mood. It's true. Okay. You it's go true. to Gourmet Glot. The cashiers there are, they're very nice. They are very nice. Or any supermarket. And... And sometimes they're just so overworked and not to just everybody. take a minute and just and, be and, polite. Right. And not everybody even looks, you know, and, and gives them the time. And I look at them. I go, wait, you can't start ringing me up. And they look at me. I go, 
I need to see a smile. <laughs> and you know what? They smile and they never forget me. And every time right. I go in, I smile at them and I say hello. And I think, you know, wanting Mashiach, I think that Hashem needs to see all of us noticing everyone around us. Right. Not right. just certain people, but and everyone. how hard people work. And, 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 and you know, when they say I think you can a make lot. a difference. I think that a lot about the security guards in, in Israel. Because, right, to go into every building, there's security guards and things. And sometimes they're army, sometimes they're not. It, it's irrelevant. Um, and I think about these guards who everybody kind of huffs and puffs at because it is so annoying. It is so annoying when you go to the mall every single time you have, you're with your kids and there's stuff in their pockets and this, and you have to take off your bag and, and everybody is kind of giving them like an annoyed look. And then I look at these security guards who have been there for like sometimes eight or nine hours straight. It doesn't matter. Even though they're sitting on the chair, it's either, it's either too hot outside or it's too cold outside, right? Like how many beautiful, perfect days are there? Or they need to go to the bathroom and they can't. Right. And and I look at them and I'm like, they're literally, I mean, yeah, they're getting paid. This is their job, but like they're, they're literally protecting us. Like, so what? So it's an inconvenience of 30 seconds for us to have to stand online or whatever it is. But like, you know, to be to show them our outward like frustration of that thirty extra seconds is so unfair to them, right? right. Because they're just doing their job, right. and they're just there, and and their job happens to be to protect you and help try to save your life. A hundred percent. But like I always think about that when I see the security guards in Israel. And like yesterday, last night when we went to Kever Rachel, we saw those you two and, girls. We were right. talking to them. 19 years old, in the army, and they're going to be there until 4 or 5 in the morning, she said. And they were there all shot as prepared. Yeah, and she was holding a really heavy knapsack. Her gun, I mean, which was super cool. But, like, how, how much did the gun weigh? Yeah. How much did the and gun weigh? And people were not 15 nice. pounds? Least, yeah. yeah. 15 pounds, plus she had an entire vest of, of ammunition, of ammunition yes. on her. Which could weigh 40, 50 pounds. I mean, the girl was carrying, like, yeah, 50, 60 pounds on her upper body, and she had to sit. There was no chair. There was no. nothing. And she was holding the gun up. Like, and her know, eyes were, were scanning you know, the whole time. Yes. And she's a 19-year-old girl. And, like, you know, people are yelling at her, no, no, let us in, let us in. I'm like, you think that this girl wants to hold you back? Right. You think that she's trying to make your job harder or right. make you – like, she's just trying to do her job. And, by the way, her job happens to be to protect you. Why don't you just smile and say thank you? We did. Okay, but let's move back to the art of conversation because I think right. that was a really good place to be. Yes. So let's say somebody walks into a room. Oh, I have a really good example. Go. Holiday party season is coming up, right? Yes. Let's say it's not your your business's ho- holiday party. It's your spouse's or it's your father's or it's your son's or it's your friend's and somehow you need to end up at this holiday party, right? Nobody really wants to go, right? Like right. it's a room with a bunch of people you don't really know. But you got to do it. So you get dressed up, you put on your makeup, you put on your shades alert, you spray your hair, <laughs> color <laughs> your hair. I wonder if that's considered covering my hair. <laughs> you do whatever you got <laughs> You do whatever you got to do and you get to this holiday party and you only know one person. But that one person has to make the rounds. That one right. person has to socialize. So you're just like standing there with your drink. Now, if you're me, I'm going to end up talking to people. Like, but... If you're you, you're going to end up talking to people. Oh, what if you're not me or you? How do you enjoy yourself? In how do you they find don't. a way to? <laughs> they don't. <laughs> they don't. So how do you find a way to enjoy yourself in that room? How do you find somebody to talk or to? Or what suggestions do you have to those people so they can enjoy right. themselves? Right. So they can initiate conversations. Maybe they're insecure. Maybe they're right. insecure and they don't think anybody wants to talk about them. Smile. Smile. Put oh, what you just stand there in the corner holding your knife. <laughs> like and today it's even easier because you can be holding your cell phone even if you're not talking to anybody, but you can make believe and <laughs> smile. <laughs> and it you know when you smile then what people it's what, if an nobody invitation. Come, what if nobody comes over? Shouldn't you make the like I would go over to people, you would go over to people. Yes. Oh, you work for uh, which department are you in? What, uh, what, what do you do? Would you say the best way to break the ice with somebody is to ask them a question about themselves? Yes. See, you really do need me. I translate your language. Oh, thank (laughs) God. (laughs) Because no one understood me, right? No, they did. I just want to know. It was please answer whether you understood me or not. (laughs) You know what? It's a podcast. There's nowhere to answer. Yesterday, last night, did you tell everybody? Last night we went to... No, wait. What's up? Back to the art of conversation. Why are you going all over the place? 
But look at the, what, we did, what I did last night in the bowling alley. That wasn't the art of conversation. You hijacked his business. I did not hijack. No, you. He appreciated you it. Oh my hands. god! He was confused at first, though. Yes. <laughs> yes. But as soon as I went and took, got the uh, basically, we went to the bowling alley after Kevarajo, and there was nobody online. Like, but it was one guy. We were the only people this, that ordered the food concession. The food concession. The pizza. Pizza Omer. It happens to be the best pizza in Israel. The best pizza, Dad. Yes. Delicious pizza. Yeah. Like it's really, right. really good, and his French fries are excellent. Oh, I took one. Only one. I didn't. I took yeah. a lot, and they were excellent. Beer yes. on tap. Beer on tap. Drinks. Oh, and then he brought us the burrata. That was a gift. Burrata is a mozz- a bowl of fresh mozzarella, but inside it's still creamy. Holy moly. He put, like, balsamic vinegar. He was so... Beyond. And he doesn't serve that. Right. It's just no. Amazing. But yes. I bet if you asked him and you knew enough, now you know. Now you got the inside scoop. Cut up um, tomatoes with balsamic vinegar. It was beautiful right. and delicious. Anyway... And he showed me all his ingredients. Anyway, he wasn't necessarily moving at the speed that Mimi would have liked him to move. What we needed, we were how many? How many? We were a lot of people. We were a lot of people. We so were Mimi decided people. to go in back and help him. Sure, he didn't ask for the help, but he got the help. So at first, he was a bit confused. He didn't understand what was necessarily happening. Yes. But he saw. I took a piece of paper right, right. away, so, so that he could trust me. In the beginning, Mimi was me. just serving drinks. Then Mimi started taking orders. Sure. Then we started serving food. Yes. To strangers. To strangers, right. Who, she was who didn't speak English. And by the way, who did not tip her. Like, you don't own it. You should know. You're, you're I, deserving they the tip. Tipped. They could have tipped. Yeah, they could have tipped. You got very yes. good service. By, got very good but service. we did a big mitzvah when we were there because there was a man that came with his three children. Very nice. And I could see... He didn't know. He was asking how much the chips are, the french fries are, you know, how much the drink is. Anyway, we decided we're paying for his Oh, no, we his, you. you oh, it's your For the fun. kids. It's quite a way to run a business. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can give it away for free. You paid for it. I paid for Very it. Very nice, yeah. But I had him sit down with his three children and got him pizza and french fries. It was and, very nice. It was and, very nice of you. And you know what? But then I got to speak with him a little bit. Normally, he would never even talk to a woman, this man. He was, you right, know. Right, probably. Right. And, and I started talking. And she chipped I, away. She I chipped did. Away. I said, listen. I said, and to his children, I said, you want Mashiach? And they said, can. Yes. I said, you have to, the way I am with you, nice and talking, these people speak English. You have to do the same. <laughs> you have to do the same to all Pay it forward. people. Pay it forward. You have to be nice to everybody, talk to everybody, not only the people in your shul or in your school, but everybody that you come across, we are all Hashem's children. But let's get back so to true. the holiday party. Yeah, let's get back to the holiday party. Thank you, Dad. The holiday party. Okay, so we're still... Oh, dad's parties, just, they loved me, right? <laughs> Show mode. Show mode. Oh, I was... Okay, yeah. so you're at a holiday party. You walk in. Maybe you get a Coke. Maybe you get some a Coke with a little something in it, something to loosen That helps. Up. Either way, it, it does help to go in not tense, right? So right. whether you're not tense is because you took a shot of tequila or didn't take a shot. Um, maybe you're, you know, loosening up means on the way to the party... Blasting some really fun music. Right. Maybe on the way to the part. Maybe it means before you get dressed to the party, uh, giving yourself a face mask and just relaxing for a half hour. Do what you can to get yourself in a lighter mood. Also, if you have no interest in talking to anybody, I can assure you they won't have any interest in talking to you. Right. You can read that across the room. So you can be prepared when you go. I'll tell you the truth. I'm a pretty social person. Sometimes I know I'm having a certain guest for Shabbos or that or that where conversation is hard. And I will actually plan conversations, like topics. Like in my mind, like if I know, there, there's a few people that I know that it's the type of person like, hi, how are you? I'm good. And so it's up to me, right? Like right. the burden is fully on me. Like Danielle, right. you need to show up. Right. Like I need to carry this conversation. And sometimes like for uh, I'll have like a moment. Like, oh, my gosh. What are we going to talk about today? And then, you know, what? I'll just think about it. I'll be like, oh, right. This happened to me this week. I went to the show. I saw this person. The, I saw the funniest thing. I saw the funniest video. Right. And I'll just like run through a few things that if the conversation gets dull, I could pick it up. And there are some basic questions you can ask people because people like to be 
I mean, not everybody likes to be asked questions, but it shows that maybe you have some interest, interest in them. Do you have children? Oh, how old are they? Where do they go to school? Little questions that aren't really terribly personal, maybe, that they may feel comfortable opening up about, right. and then you start a conversation. Right. I really like the clothing one, because that's, like, so pariv, right? Like, I love your shirt. You don't even have to say, where'd you get it? Like, right. I love how you paired it with that skirt. I love your shoes. Um, or your hair oh, looks I amazing. That same top. Right, right. Well, only if it's true. What if I do? Right. No, I, I, I started what, like, by color saying, wearing, oh my gosh, where the do the you tree. buy your lipstick? It right. looks so good. It's not rubbing off. Or, right. um, what are you drinking? What are you yes. drinking? I'm thirsty. I need a change. Like it could be, it could just be anything. Yeah. Just like, is anything. anyone sitting in this chair? Right. Is just find anything. somebody, find somebody. First of all, get your, it's okay. So step one, right. How to be social. Step one. Well, if you go, go in, into a social situation, then be mood. social. Right. Go in. Go well, in. No, right. Mood. Saying be social oh. isn't so easy for right. Me, right. True. But so when we're teaching them how to be social, right. so step one is enter the situation in a good light mood, right. with an eagerness to want to get to know people. Right. Right. So that's step one and two. One, get yourself in a good mood. Two, put yourself in a mind frame where you want to get to know people. Three, put a smile on your face. Four, initiate conversation. How come you're not taking notes? Well, you don't need to take notes on this. I, no, I'm I don't need to take Johnny. notes. I know. Fine. Yeah. Fine. 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 I don't, Fine. I don't, Fine. I don't right. think I, I know. Need you're to giving the class. class. Maybe I could improve myself a little no, bit. No, I'm the translator. But, yeah, you're you know, from my class. point of view, yeah. when I see mom in action, which I have so many times, mom's greatest, one of her, one of her greatest assets is she genu- genuinely likes people. Right. And you have to put yourself in the mind frame of liking the people, the strangers around you, so you're interested in talking to them. Yeah. And one way to do it is say, I have nothing in common with these people, or at least I think I have nothing in common. Let me see what these people are all about. They're so different from me. Right. But it's not... But it's not necessarily true. There's always (laughs) something... (laughs) There's always something... That you can find you so that you have in common. It's unbelievable. Come on. I just gave you a compliment. What's not oh. true about what he said? Because <laughs> eventually you find some commonality. That's that- what he said. I think that's oh. what I said. Oh. <laughs> Well, you needed to translate that for me. You need a translator <laughs> and you need to be translated too. But you know what? <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to tell you. I need a translation. This is why my life is so interesting. Right. And mine with you is also oh, very oh, interesting. Why, thank you. But you know what? I just want to tell you that it's just I've learned that in life it's just easier to have nice things come out of your mouth and smiles than anything else. Sometimes it is hard for me, so I hide out. I don't, you know, I I go in my room I or my zen even zone. Like real extroverts, though, need time to regroup. A hundred. Well, talking about regrouping, yeah. mom hit on something which people don't know about, what? which is her zen zone. My right? zen zone. That's true. She what, has no one's allowed. What is a zen zone my, to you? My zen zone is where I can be with me. It's basically right outside of her bedroom. Space. It's like her porch outside of her bedroom. It's we, her had, private space. we had a door put into our bedroom to the outside. Yes. And it's a very small And mom made I a have a lounge area. chair. I did put a little table with two chairs for There's Maggie plans. and Batya. Right. Maggie and Batya were invited in. Yeah, well, only, but I they know. Not. I no, not. They know they, can, they have to ask first. Okay. But, and then I do a lot of beautiful... Uh, gardening there. I, you know, my flowers for me are very therapeutic. Therapeutic. I think for a lot of people. You look at a flower and you have to smile. So if you're going to go to to socialize, look at a beautiful flower before you get I there. Also, I, I, I don't actually like, I mean, I, I don't have anywhere to garden, but flowers for me before Shabbos is a very big deal because seeing like the vibrancy right. of the colors and on yes. the table, like it's a life force. Flowers are, they're live and they grow and they blossom and they're really beautiful. See, they would also have been very good for me on Shabbat, for Shabbos, my, right. my life married to your father. But almost every week for many, many ta- months, for many times. Months? 
Dad buys have, flowers every week. Not every week. Not every I'm, week. I'm with you the whole summer. You no, buy every week in the summer. But now he's more conscious of it because he he used to leave them in the trunk of the car. <laughs> Friday night, Mom would say, how come you didn't buy me flowers? I said, oops, I did, but they're in the trunk of the car in Shabbos. So. And it's Shabbos. I can't get them. I can't get them. <laughs> and Moxie Shabbos, they were dead. <laughs> I, oh my yes. gosh! So I decided to. But start to my gardening. credit, she right. gave me credit, even though they were in the trunk. Yeah, it was nice. No, so I think that's the thing. The thing is that you have to follow all those steps, right? You have to show. You have to first get yourself into the right mood. You have to show up wanting to meet people, like wanting to socialize. Then you have to put a smile on your face. Right. You need to initiate conversation by asking them about themselves, right. and then you need to engage in the conversation. Regroup. You wait, need to regroup. But before you regroup, I think there's a few things we're missing that I personally care a lot about. One, eye contact. If I'm having yes. a conversation with you, I don't want you looking in a million different directions. It To me, it's distracting. It's hard for me to have a conversation. And when I'm talking to you, I by me giving you my eye contact, to me, I'm giving you my respect. Right. I value what you're saying to That's me. That's why I'm looking I'm at not, a screen right now. I'm not just having the answers. I'm not just asking you a question for the sake of asking you a question. I'm asking you a question, and then I'm showing you respect by actually taking in the information Which you're giving me. Which is also a great right. lesson for your children. Right. When you were little and your brothers were little and we'd be talking, which was constantly, I guess. Right. I would say, no, no, if you spoke, if you spoke to me and you were looking somewhere else, I said, I can't hear you. Right. You have to look at me when you speak to me. So with children, I go back and forth because I, 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 I do find it irritating when my children don't look at me when they speak. But I do have one or two children who I think actually the direct eye contact with me is like a sensory overload to their system. Like I, I see it. Like I see that the child listens to me and that when I force him to look at me, it's, it's momish painful to them. But sometimes I will say to them, I want you – like nicely, I'll say I want you to look at me when I'm saying this because – it makes me feel hurt. Oh, I'm saying the reverse. But, but right. I want means, them to look at me when they're oh, when speaking. when they're speaking. When they speak right. to someone, they should look them directly in the eye because right. it builds trust. It does. It does. But, I can't but dad's way was not saying you have to look at me. He'd say, I can't, I can't hear, hear you. you. Right. And it was very it was right. very effective because now I'm also very sensitive to it. And all three of you look but people also, in the face I when you talk I think when you're them. in a big social environment, especially if you do want to socialize with everybody and you do know everybody, you do want to get a chance to talk to everybody. And I think that oftentimes people think that while they're talking to somebody like, well, I need to talk to this person. I need to talk to this person. That's not the best way to talk to everybody. I, my opinion is the best way to talk to a whole room full of people is to talk to one or two or three people, however much you're engaged with conversation, really give them your full attention. Right. Don't look for the next person right. you're talking to. Don't do this quality over quantity. And you don't need to sit there for 25 minutes. And I think but I'm going to tell you, I, I go, <laughs> no, no, no. I, we go to a lot of simchas. And there Baruch are Hashem. some people, Baruch Hashem, but there are some people who sit in their chair at the table barely get up to to be sameach, to dance or whatever, and wait for everyone to come to them to say hello. I don't go to those people to say hello. <laughs> I refuse. Uh, Guys, say cheers. I cheers. Wait, we're Instagramming mid-podcast right now. I I like... Oh, that wasn't a good picture. Oh, everybody's eyes But right otherwise, I, I do walk around. <laughs> I do walk around a room... You know, at a simcha, and people that I certainly know, so I stop and say, "Mazel tov!" You get punished for sitting no. down. <laughs> yes. Which, by the way, is true in your home also. You do not like when people sit down. Oh, I, I, so, I would I would venture to no, say totally we're not. That's it's not the totally discussion here. This is not <laughs> the, the discussion. Like, like what happens I if just you sit down to read a book for two minutes? And in you your know house? what? I'm going to tell you. Okay, you go to a social <laughs> event. Let's say it's a Jewish social event. It's so easy to start. To Where were you feel. for the holidays? No, oh. no, Mazel Tov. Oh. You have you say Mazel Tov. Oh, Mazel Tov. You're at a simcha. You want to say mazel tov. Basically, Mimi just wants everybody to be friends. Everybody talks to everybody. But at a holiday party, there's a, there's a potential side benefit from being friendly or attempting to be chatty. What's that? It is you're a stranger there. Your spouse works for this company in whatever capacity it is. 
and your being a pleasant, engaging person might actually do your spouse some good. Look at that, Dad. Absolutely. Always thinking practically. Absolutely. It's a good thing we have him. We would, just be, sure. we would just be socializing. Because somebody, somebody, <laughs> no, somebody, somebody may, may run into your spouse's boss and say, oh, I just met so-and-so, the spouse of him or right. her. And he or she was so pleasant and engaging. I never met them before. What a nice person. And then that and initiates that a better po- relationship. Reflects right? positively. So and they say, oh, I didn't know that about this person. By the way, not only are we getting to holiday season, it's the winter. Tons and tons of conventions. And now, I'm right? Be, right. Yes. This is this is also, like, when you go to a convention for whatever industry, jewelry, food, real estate, I don't know, what other, lawyer, do lawyers have conventions? Yes, I'm <laughs> sure they do. <laughs> they call them seminars. <laughs> Seminars. I, I was going to find another word for them, but, but I have something else to <laughs> Not say. Not conventions that anybody else wants to go to besides lawyers, but fine. Wait a second, Benjamin. I love you. Benjamin is the lawyer. Is a lawyer. He's the only one I like, though. But it's fine. Um, but one second. When you go to a convention, you have another added benefit, right? Everybody is there to uh, network. Right? Yes. Right, to do so, business. So that's actually an environment where you could feel intimidated because maybe you're the smallest guy at the convention. Maybe you don't even have a booth. Maybe you're going because you're just starting your oh, business. Oh, you want a pine right. right. like you've been right. there and, and you want a booth the next year. Right. And maybe not everybody's giving you the time of day because you're not quote unquote anybody yet maybe maybe you're at the top maybe you're in the middle who cares but the bottom line is everyone is there to network so right away you have a leg up in that setting and right away you hold your head up because you're there because you want to be there but so do all these other people want to be there and they need to be there so they need to be social so you walk over and say hi how are you Tell me about your business. Tell me about your platform. What do you have going on? Let me tell you about what I do. I would love to talk to you more about this new project I have. And just with a smile on your face, be polite and be engaging and be friendly. So now I'm going to tell you about, that's great for conventions okay. and business. And what about your everyday life? You have a Supermarket, lot, yeah. You have a lot of friends. You know a lot of people, the kids, the the, the, friend, the your children's School, friends. Gone, yeah. Yeah, your children's friends, parents. Parents, yeah. And and I found for me, I very rarely anyone ever said gave me compliments about my children. And my mother always told me, always say nice things. Right. And you know what? When I would bump into one of the kids, uh, the kid's parents, like your friend's parents, I always would say, oh, so-and-so came over, was so pleasant, it's was very really nice. nice. When somebody says something nice about your child, even if it's silly, yes. even if it's like, Oh my gosh, how does he keep his laces so clean? Look at those sneakers. They exactly. people. By the way, it puts a smile on your face. And it, and it, and they warm up to it's you. Nachat. Yeah. We it's all true. love Nachat for uh, you do something for it's someone's like what child. You said in the beginning. Everybody likes to hear nice things. Everybody likes to hear nice things. Okay, we do have questions, you know. Oh, okay. All right, I'm ready. Oh, are the questions just from you or for both of us? Because <laughs> <laughs> they're just for you, mom's leaving. You know, this person, I need to this person didn't um, make it uh, clear. Did you grow up religious? Me? Traditional. Very traditional, but we. my grandmother was with us always, Mama Yakot. Right. And she had her tichel and her tehillim and her sitter. And she sat Indian style. And she sat in, to 93 years old, Kenaina Har, she sat Indian style on the floor and stood herself up. And she... Which, by the way, is the most impressive part. I know. So no. yourself but, up by yourself. I'm most but impressive when mom's also... saying, can I know her? Because that's a word. <laughs> Mama Yako yeah, certainly never heard. No, right. never. Right. Blah, blah, blah. I'm Shikha But <laughs> my, my, my grandmother used to, every so often during the day, like every half hour or hour, she would take the tichel off, not in front of men, but she would take the tichel off and brush her hair. She had a little comb also. She had a little... Uh, um, uh, handkerchief that she put the sitter, the tehillim, and and her snuff, snuff, is that what you, snuff, <laughs> and she would tie it up, and she would take out the comb and comb her hair, and she had very long hair, 
So she would braid her little, put make a little braid. She was and very then, petite. She was, oh, she was the cutest thing. And she would tie her techo, like exactly like Danielle does. Wild. Wild. Exactly like Danielle does. Okay, do you, oh, this person is the question but I was always, to me, and they actually wrote my name. But I was, wait, I'm not finished oh, okay. with my question. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I was always very spiritual. Okay. And I, my mother would always tell me about it every holiday, and, and I loved shul, and I loved being Jewish. When we lived in Paris, I remember I was six years old, and a girl in school came over to me and said, oh. You're a Jew. Go back to your country. No. And it stayed with me. I Was still... Israel a country when you were six? How old? <laughs> <laughs> How old do you think your mother is? Yes. Israel was a country. Israel was a country in 48. When were you born? 57. I can't do the math. 57. <laughs> oh, well, oh, no. So much after. Oh, my gosh. All of eight years old. Nine years old. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Not a crazy question. So. Oh, <laughs> That I know Dad wasn't me. born yet because he's much younger. I didn't know. About you. <laughs> I like younger men. I, I I wanted a younger man. They're only a year apart, but eight months. Eight months. But <laughs> but that stayed with me, and I think that so sick. That made me love my heritage. Even more. Right. Because it like pushed you up against the wall and it made you right. recognize your Jewish identity. Right. In a way. And when we moved from but Paris to Montreal. Um, side effect. Of when we moved from Montreal, from, from uh, Paris to Montreal, and there were so many Jews, so many, and, and, and uh, shuls, I would go to shul. Amazing. Amazing. And that was it. Okay. Um, next question. Mom, I'm going to let you answer this question, but I am timing you, okay? You have one minute. Right. On your mark, get well, set. Ask the question before no, you no, time me. No, 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 that's not fair. On your mark, on your mark, it's a go. How do you make your frickin' Z? Go. <laughs> you used up three, four seconds, five seconds. I cannot give a recipe like that. You know what? Danielle's coming next No, let's week. go. Just say, how do you make your frickin' Z? Very well. <laughs> <laughs> With a lot of love. How do you make your frickin' Z? Okay. Okay. <sighs> well, Danielle's coming. We'll make it next week if she has a second. It's actually going in the cookbook. Oh, so then we have to make it next week so right. she can measure because I don't measure. Okay. How do you keep calm when kids are fighting or acting super crazy? I'm assuming that question's for me because you just didn't deal with it. I was thinking, my mother. My mother has a famous line. <laughs> Go to your room. No. What? No. Go find me in the other room. Go find me in the other room. Go <laughs> see if I'm in the other room. <laughs> We have one brother who we won't name, Eric, who uh, <laughs> who used to go, <laughs> and then he would come back crying. <laughs> that was so mean. Why do you know you? <laughs> he was four years old. Okay, leave him alone. <laughs> so sensitive. He's really the best. He's, He's so really sensitive, I cannot eat fennel oh with gosh. him around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, how do I keep calm when my kids are fighting? I just also don't deal with it so much. I like, I say, like, if, first of all, like, I don't, I just don't get involved. I don't listen, really. Like, I don't hear the fighting. I just, I really try not to get involved. I don't want their memory of childhood to be their mother saying, stop fighting, stop fighting. So I don't really say it so much. If they come to me with the fight, I, I do, like, Lefi, Rabbits, and Spetner, and I just, I deal with them both in the exact same way. So, like, if they're fighting about the Play-Doh, let's say, he took it, he took it. I'll listen to each one. Okay, you, tell me what happens, and I will repeat back what I heard them say. Then I will turn to the other one. Usually that one will try to interrupt the first one. They'll say, one second, I'm listening to this one. I'm coming to listen to you. And then that one will start, he's lying, he's lying, or she's lying, she's lying. And I'm like, nobody's lying. That's what they said happened. Now I want to hear what you said happened. I believe you and I believe you because we are complex being and we can believe everything. And I'll listen to their story and I'll say, okay, now I'm taking the Play-Doh away. Both of you go to your room <laughs> or not go to your room. I'll just take it away. And now both of them have it. But because that's always my method of dealing with it. So usually one is, you know, one initiated and one didn't, but like, 
I mean, I'm taking it away every single time. Like I'm removing that issue every time. So sometimes you get messed over. Sometimes you get messed over. Sometimes you get messed over. But I never want to like single anybody out. And I never want it to be about the last person, right? Like the last person before they come to me is the person that hit, right? The person that hits comes to me. But like there was a whole fight before the hitting. So what? I'm sorry. Is hitting worse than saying bad words or verbally abusing somebody or, you know, hurting somebody emotionally. I don't know. So I'm not only ever going to punish the person that hits because something led to the hitting, right? Like nobody walks around smacking people for no reason. Not that I promote hitting. Violence is not okay. But everything that led up to the violence is also probably not okay. So if I'm not there and I don't see it and they come to me with a problem, I just try to deal with them both in the same way. And I, I'm calm about it because I don't care. Like, people, the siblings fight. I fought with my brothers also, and we love each other, and they're my best friends, and, and it's fun. But also, like, me and Ellie do talk about this a lot. This is a bit of a stereotype, but, like, I do think in a Sephardi home, or in a home with a Sephardi mother, there is a little bit more, like, louder voices, we'll call it, where people are just... um you know, sharing their emotions more freely, right? I'm upset at you, I'm angry, you hurt me, you this, you that, which is how we grew up. But ultimately, like, I see me and my brothers, and I don't think it's unhealthy. I really don't. Yeah, we, like, yelled and screamed at each other, and then we got over it because, like, maybe it wasn't the best form of communication, but it was communication. And in this day and age, with phones and technology and texting and this and that, I I, I don't care if the kids are yelling at each other, but they're communicating their feelings. Okay, fine. Me and my brothers don't yell at each other today. We're adults. We have really good communication skills. We speak all the time. If somebody's upset, they say they're upset. Nobody needs to yell at each other. But like, you have to move on. But we were taught communication skills. And like, I really think I I, I value that. I think communication is really important. One of the things I've done with you and the boys not so much, but my mother did it all the time. <laughs> I've done it. Doing the voice, but actually I didn't do it at all. My no, no, not it. so much. I did it a few times, but if you would have a fight oh, with yeah, your sibling, yeah, yeah. I would put them you in actually did one very room. often. I did. Yeah. I would put the two of them because I didn't want to hear who's right, who's wrong. They're both right and they're both wrong. Always. Right. And so you can't would, come out until you're friends. I would put them in a room. You have to stare at each other. No talking. And when you, when you feel you can work it out, then you come out. Right. And and that that would happen. And it worked. It worked because you then would both of you end up laughing. Hysterical laughing. And everybody. saying she is crazy. <laughs> okay. Right. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Call me crazy if you want, but if it made the argument Go right. away. Why not? Okay. Even with my to-do list, kids and gone, in between jobs, I still find not enough hours in the day. So that was one comment. Then there was another comment, um, balancing work family. Then there was another comment, um, would love to know how you manage work life family. Right. Family. There was notes. a lot of questions about managing right. work notes. and family. Okay. So you want to hear my yeah. my take on it? Yes. This is like going to sound harsh, harsher than I usually am, but like grow up. You know what I mean? Yes. We're adults. We're not babies. We cannot complain all day long. It does not help you. It does not. I mean, you know what? Forget you. I don't talk about me. I needed to just grow up. I needed to stop complaining. I needed to stop looking at myself like a victim. I needed to stop saying, oh my gosh, I have so much to do. I have this to do. No. I needed to literally change my mindset and say, I can do it. I'm not a victim. I have everything I want. Thank God I have a family who needs me. I have a job I love. Do they take up a lot of time? Yes. Can I actually get everything done in a day? No, not always. But I get done what I can. I have a task in front of me. Instead of complaining about it, sometimes I'll procrastinate and put another task in back. But I won't feel guilty about it. I won't complain about it. I won't tell everybody in the world how hard life is. Life is hard. Like, I just... This is a huge pet peeve of mine right now, and I hope that nobody take, like is going to be insulted by this, but I feel like the world has come to a place where we're so busy being politically correct with ourselves. Like, forget the outside world. Politically correct with ourselves. Self-care. Self-care. Take time. Do this. Um, don't talk about diets. Don't talk about this. We're so busy learning what we can't talk about. Retraining our minds. Retraining our thinking. Redoing everything. What about if you just live? What if you just live your life? What if you wake up in the morning and you forget all of this like crazy amount of like 
immense information that's telling us that everything we've done in our lives is wrong and everything we're doing is wrong and we need to fix everything. What if we just shut off that noise and we just said, what do I want to do today? What does Danielle need to do today? And how do I make those two things happen? How do I make the things I need to do and the things I want to do exist within this 24 hours and then just start doing them? If you want lists, use lists. No, I I mean like... No, like very well. Sometimes said. I feel like the self care hashtag self care. Like I'm sorry, yeah, I would like to get a manicure. A manicure is good for my mind. You know what else is good for my mind? Food shopping. Because then when I go to make dinner and there's food in my fridge, I'll be less stressed about that. Yeah. Like sometimes getting the things done that you need to get done is also. So, I, I I'm so I'm like I'm tired of the self care word. I am right. Like just like do for yourself, but also like. Do for others. Like, we're people. Hashem made us. We can handle things, guys. We are strong. We are women, and we are strong, and we can get things done. We can. And sometimes, rather than just keep on in your mind thinking of all the things you have to accomplish today, write them down, and you will see that chances are you will accomplish everything and more, or you will prioritize. Pri- prioritize. prioritize. Yeah, pri- <laughs> I can't say it. Say it for me. Prioritize your list, and you will feel so much better. And you can say to yourself at the end of the day, you know what? I did not get to do A, B, right. and C, but I did thing. D through Z. That's amazing. Also, I just think like it's okay. Like I have lists. I make lists every day, and literally, I've had items on my list that have been there for months. They just roll over from day to day Me to too. day. Honestly, right. and usually it's things like pictures and albums, and it like it does. It weighs me down sometimes. Like Danielle, just get the pictures done, and then I tell myself, I'm like, you know what? If I cared that much about the pictures getting done, I would get them done. But all the other things on my list are priorities because they're more important. So when I have time, I'll get this done. And if I don't get done, they won't get done. And it's okay. Like, it's okay not to get to everything on your list also. I think that's okay also. And by the way, I think like I don't have enough time is also kind of a cop out, right? Like, don't think about it. Don't think I don't have enough time. Make a list and just go task to task to task to task. And even if your task is a 15-minute coffee break. And if you have to spend less time on the phone with your friends one day to get more done, then that's what you do. And you just... Yeah. I have something else to say about communication. (laughs) (laughs) Which I think was the topic here. Yeah, okay. We don't have a topic. Well, well, we made the topic. No, we did. It was how to be social. Right. Right. We talked about... Communication at a holiday party, right. at a family event, at a simcha. And many of these, the side benefit of communicating was self-rewarding, meaning there was a benefit. Right. People like you better or you just have a better time because the time passes better because you're communicating with right. people. Right. What about when it's not selfishly motivated? What do you mean? I had the opportunity on several events to participate with mom in chesed weddings. Okay. Ah. Where we worked as staff at these weddings to save cost for for the wedding. And on many occasions, I worked bussing tables. Whether it been at the cocktail hour, the dinner, I was a waiter, I was a busboy, whatever it took. To whatever make, the wedding needed to get done. And we, and we engaged others, and, and it was a great experience. But besides that, I would walk around the cocktail hour at times, and I was one particular caterer who's a man, I don't know if I can mention his name, wonderful guy. The best. Who? Joel Katz. Oh, absolutely. Joel Katz also stepped up and Joel catered Katz the Terry event. I mean, is, Joel sure. Katz of Prestige is Caterers one is. of the most generous. And de- his son is doing a great job. One of the most generous and decent guys I've ever run into. But when he was catering, supplying the food, and I was working as a staff member, he didn't take pity on me that this is not my really job. He made, worked me as hard as he would anybody else, and I was in one particular function. And I was bussing in the cocktail hour. And he said to me, Mark, not one glass, not one napkin remains on a table. These tables have to be clean. These guests have to see a clean environment. So I'm walking around with my tray, picking up garbage. And people are dumping their garbage onto my tray, which is what the tray is for. And I noticed no one's looking me in the eye as they do it. I'm invisible. Or asking if they can put it on your tray. Because you're a service provider. But I'm a service provider, but more important, I was invisible. And thank God this is not what I do for a living. And it doesn't affect me, but it bothered me to the point that I realized 
I think I might be guilty of doing the same thing when I'm at a simcha or at a cocktail party. I'm putting my garbage down on the tray and I'm not looking at that server who's working awfully hard for very minimal wages. Right. And they're invisible. And I said, that's not right and it's not fair. And what does it cost me to look at this and say, thank you. young person and say, thank you. And I go out of my way at any time I'm in a, a setting like that to look at that person and say, thank you. And I can't tell you the look on their face. Yes. A, they're taken by surprise because most people don't recognize them as providing a service or being a valuable human being. And if you believe in God, that every one of us comes from God, no matter what religion, we're, no matter who we are, then look them in the eye and say, thank you. Because you want your father to be proud. <laughs> and Hashem is. No, you're right. You, but it's you want Hashem past- to be proud of you, yes. that you're looking at every person and knowing that every single person has value. Right. They are human. And yeah, you're going to know it, right? Um, right. Uh, uh, car wash. Anybody. People. Just say thank behind you. Behind the counter. The valet. The valet. Anyone. Anyone. Look people in the eye when they perform a service and say thank you. It takes one second. Right. And you are doing a, a big mitzvah in making them feel valuable. Right. It's a that's big my, deal. That's my public service announcement. It's, you know yeah. what? It just makes a huge difference. Just to say hello. You know? Okay, so do you want to know who the next question is? And I actually know the answer to it. You're going to love this one. Who is the guest on the next episode? Our next episode is going to be all about the relationship between parents and educators. And we have a star educator who I cannot, you know who it is. I but do. We cannot, yeah. I don't know. But we cannot say now. It's a surprise. Oh, wow. She's really fabulous and yes. has, ex- like, very, very high credentials and, like, uh, but very great, experienced. Well, great person. Like, she's, like, totally legit. Like, well, we know she's a she. No, she's a real authority on the subject. What? Can and, I be? And, oh, I'm the and I think, I think, right. And I think the relationship between parents and educators is one that is filled a, oftentimes with a lot of tension because we don't see each other's perspective. Right. And I think it's going to be a really, really good podcast. That's great. Yeah? What do you I, think yes, about that? Yes. That take on. I think yes. that's an important subject. I agree. I, I think it's very important. I agree. Very um, important. Oh, look at this one. What was Danielle like as a teenager? Okay. Next. Okay, we need a, <laughs> we need a separate podcast. Wow, wow, way to throw me under the bus. Danielle was a teenager, exactly what a teenager is, and I'm very proud of how she took her teenage experiences and evolved to be the person that okay, she so is today. Okay, so I just wanted, this is a very specific question that I want to answer. How do you stay diligent and stick to your task for the day? Honestly, it's what we said. I prioritize them, and I really just go through them one at a time. And if there's a job that I see I really, really don't want to do, sometimes I evaluate it. Sometimes it's because it's really not a priority, and I can push it off. Try to find somebody to do it. Okay, you can delegate it. That was right. I'm not a delegator, though. And sometimes it's because it's a big project, and I personally know that I have a flaw where... When a project feels big to me, it's very hard for me to get started. Like when I have to write recipes, the longest recipes are the hardest ones for me to start. Whereas I, it could take me the same amount of time to write one long recipe as it can four short ones, but I'd rather write the four short ones. Like I don't know why. So I do have to push myself. And that's really what I meant when I say to myself, Danielle, grow up. Come on. Like, don't put it off. Just write the long one. You know it takes the same amount of time. Just start it. And once I get started, I'm fine. But I think that's part of it. Like, we all have to look internally and find those places where, yes, it's important to baby ourselves and nourish ourselves and blah, 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 all of that. You know that because it's being told all day long on every single, you know, social platform in the world. But at the same time, it's also important to nurture the parts of us that need to be nurtured to grow up. To, we, we need to block them. We need to push ourselves out of our comfort zones a little bit. You know, like... Always being comfortable is not the best way to grow, right? Like for your body to grow, you experience growing pains. Things hurt. Things have to move. Like, and I, you know, I'm really a victim of this. I don't like change. I would never ever change if I didn't have to. But it's uncomfortable for me. But the best changes have led to really good things for me. So I don't know. I think that's all I want. And to say. <laughs> make sure. <laughs> now you have to make sure that you make time for yourself. But also make time for you and your spouse. 
Oh, because Actually, that was one life? of the questions. Because if Wait, you don't make time, you know, you end your life with your spouse. The children, Baruch Hashem, grow up and and educate themselves and then get married to Mitzvah Hashem and give you grandchildren and great-grandchildren. But you end up with your spouse. So a lot of people so, ask for marriage advice. Marriage That's advice? That's the next podcast. That's the Another next podcast. podcast, marriage. There's one advice. What? And my brother said, my brother and his wife had said it to me when we were engaged, dad and I were engaged. And he said, Nicole, you know, the marriage is going to be. Your brother and his wife, your brother and your sister in law? Yeah, and my sister in law. <laughs> I do call her my sister now. But anyway, uh, they. The one thing he said to me is marriage, understand, marriage is a full time job 24 7. Unlike any other job you will take on in life, this is a job that you do not ever take for granted and you work hard at all the time. Right. That means communication. Uh, it's working on yourself. Everybody has to work on themselves yes. in a marriage. And work, work, work. No, and we're making grow. sure That's that you have a long time with your spouse. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Yep. I don't know why we were worried that you would have nothing to say. We never <laughs> have to be worried again. Uh, Danielle, you, you, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Okay, okay. As a matter of fact, it's like glued to the tree, you know? I moved 6,000 miles away. It's not glued to the tree. I would venture to say the tree is true. How sad out. are you that we're leaving today? <laughs> no, I am sad. So let's okay. play. When are you moving to Israel? When are you making Aliyah? I, I'm ready. Actually, I, I believe what she told Mayer was, I would love to live here with you, but Papi won't let me. <laughs> right. <laughs> She's turning yes. the kids against him. Of course. Also, we're she not the Well, I tried with you. You're no good. Ellie Sheva. You who Kishaba also is on. Ellie Sheva is clearly on Papi's side. She's not on his side for us not to be here. No, but she's on it. She's uh, she's upset you, with him. You, who can get your father to do anything in the world, is the one thing you cannot convince him of. I'm not trying to, to convince him to move here. I want him to be happy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's only happy when you're around. No. I mean, he's no. happy with me, too. But he likes <laughs> No, he's, he, no. he's not ready. What's wrong, not with, ready to move here. what's wrong with being able to come here instead of staying in a hotel to stay in an apartment for three weeks at a time? To. He likes the hotel. That's he likes that, the breakfast that's, in the morning. But that doesn't make you insecure, his love for you? It should. What insecure? Why would that make me secure to know that my parents love me? No, that, that's literally how you build security. That your children. father doesn't want to hang out, be with you more? I, I don't think he doesn't want to be with me more. I, I left. He didn't leave. I left. Whose side are you on? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you want me to turn against him? No. Just so what get, him, get him moving. No. Put I'm a little crushing. fire under the Sometimes office. when you love somebody, you put their needs first. His I, needs I, is to make his wife happy. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. On that note, everybody. This Shavuato. Is- <laughs> well, because in America, it's 7 in the morning. Mom, is this, well, but they're not mom, listening to this. I'm releasing this on Thursday. Oh. Maybe I'll- Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Maybe I'll release it on Tuesday. All right. Yom Tov. Yom Tov. Wow, look at that. That was Hebrew. Amazing. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. We love you. We love everybody here at Peas in a Podcast. We hope that you enjoyed, and we will see you next time with our special guest. You may see me at, the, when is uh, Kosher Fest? You're going to Kosher Fest? You know what? Oxygen, the company Oxygen, because yeah. I sent a text to Kosher Fest, and I told them, <laughs> I, I don't understand what, uh, an email, I don't understand why. I don't get invited to Kosher Fest. You should do the giveaway this year. I'm left to all the stuff. I could. And give it away. You should do the giveaway. Uh, well, I want a free ticket. So anyway. I want a free ticket. It's a very expensive. Anyway, this vendor. The Oxygen, mom. I really appreciate it. Oxygen sent me a text saying, I read your comment about not being invited to Kosher Fest. Here is my information. You are my guest. Okay, mom. So go and do the giveaway. Okay, everybody. We love you. We want to wish you a wonderful week and we will see you next time. This has been 
Season two, episode five. Why? 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 Of Peas in a Podcast. I'm but Danielle. We're do one next week. Yes, please, God. Okay. I'm Danielle from Peas, Love, and Carrots. I love you all. Have an amazing day, whatever day it is, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.